interesting in mining Bitcoin with your self-directed IRA or 401k? Well, this podcast will explain, number one, can you do it? Number two, the potential tax implications. And then thirdly, what you need to consider before doing it. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's podcast, I want to talk about does Bitcoin mining trigger the UBTI tax? So before I get into what exactly is the UBTI tax, let me just briefly explain in a few minutes, simple terms, what exactly Bitcoin mining is. So let's start. Bitcoin is obviously the first and the most popular crypto. Bitcoin runs on a decentralized computer network or a distributed ledger that reviews and confirms transactions into crypto. When computers on the network verify and process the transaction, new Bitcoins are created or mined. So Bitcoin mining, also known as proof of work, is the process for how new Bitcoins get created or born into circulation. Bitcoin mining is the method of producing new Bitcoins by resolving exceptionally hard math problems that verify a block of Bitcoin transactions. And then they get confirmed and then uploaded to the blockchain. When Bitcoin is effectively mined, the miners receive a fixed amount of Bitcoin as a reward. And that is the game. The whole process is spending money on equipment, on power, in order to solve or have the computer solve these very complex math algorithms that get more difficult every two weeks as the reward gets more valuable. And by solving or having the computer solve this complex math algorithm, a block gets put on the blockchain and then you get rewarded if your computer solved the problems. Therefore, the more computers you have and the more power you have, the better chance you're going to have of receiving a Bitcoin reward. And with the price of Bitcoin, you know, hovering anywhere from forty to sixty-six thousand dollars over the last three, four months, the process of mining or the experience of mining has become more valuable. Okay, so now that we kind of understand what mining is, and mining is really the teeth of the Bitcoin process. So you need to have miners, you need to have computers all over the world that can solve these algorithms to make sure that no one is doing what's called double spending, sending one Bitcoin to two people. And these complex algorithms ensure that the transactions that are going to be put on the blockchain are following the previous block so that there's no disruption in the blockchain uh, process. So proof of work or POW, consensus algorithm, and it's the most commonly used in blockchain technology. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum currently use proof of work, although Ethereum is going to migrate over to a proof of stake or POS algorithm, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So proof of work involves computer out, computer power, right? The more computers, the more ASIC cards, the better chance you're going to have to solve these complex math algorithms. And obviously the more cost involved, i.e. electricity. Proof of stake is different. All you do is you're staking your coins. So the more coins you have, the more you can stake. And it's kind of a, a random um, validation formula um, that doesn't take nearly as much energy consumption. So it's seen more as the future, even though it may not be as secure um, because of the amount of energy proof of work um, requires. So there's two ways you can mine. You can mine proof of work or you can mine proof of stake. Today's podcast, I'm going to focus on proof of work and I'll do a subsequent podcast on proof of stake and uh, UBTI. So again, the way to mine Bitcoin is you need computers and ASIC cards. It could run you 10 to 15 grand in, in equipment to get um, you know, sufficient uh, equipment uh, usable for um, you know, Bitcoin mining. Um, and it obviously as the price increases, uh, the rewards, um, will increase as well. Um, the reward amount is cut in half roughly every four years or every 210,000 blocks as of December, you know, 21 Bitcoin traded around 50,000. So when you get 6.25 Bitcoins, that's worth about 312,000 bucks. So what does the IRS say on mining? 
So 2014-21 is the only IRS notice that issues any guidance on the tax treatment of cryptos. And it's pretty simple. Cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is treated as property, i.e. like stock or real estate. So that means it's a capital asset. If you buy and you sell it, and you hold it less than 12 months, you'll have short-term capital gains or loss. If you hold it more than 12 months, you'll have long-term capital gains or loss. Same formula as stocks. For mining, there's a couple sentences in the notice that talks about mining. Okay, and I'll just read what it says, uh, since it's the easiest way of explaining the tax treatment of uh, the mining. It says, if a taxpayer is mining, a virtual currency constitute a trade or business, and the mining activity is not undertaken by the taxpayer as an employee, then the net earnings from the self-employment activity resulting in those activities constitute self-employment income, i.e., constitute business income. So if you look at the first line, it says if, that's the first word. It doesn't say a taxpayer's mining a virtual currency constitutes a trader business. It says if. So that suggests that not all mining activity results in a trader business, right? It's a probably a fact and circumstances gray test. It's not black and white. Whereas if you own two computers or two ASIC cards, then you are deemed a business. It just says if which leads it to essentially a fact and circumstances analysis. So when you look at the IRS and what they say is a trader business, they have some language and this is an IRS definition. They define a term, the trader business generally includes any activity carried on for the production of income from selling goods or performing services. Okay, so it doesn't give you that much. It's a very general definition um, and there's much case law and debate as to whether an activity rises to a trader business. You can look at the concept of trading. Is it a hobby? Is it a passive? Is it a active business? Now in the real estate world, the uh, IRS has uh, promulgated um, you know, rules under 199A for real estate activity, safe harbor rules, so that more taxpayers have more guidance as to whether their activity rises to a level of a trader business. Some taxpayers want a trader business. Why? Because you can get deductions, right? If you generate a lot of deductions from the activity, then a trader business is good. There's actually some, most miners, believe it or not, want their business to be treated, or well, their activity, sorry, to be treated as a business because they can deduct all the costs of the Bitcoin mining, the electricity and all the hardware. Whereas many passive investors do not want that because they want the Bitcoin to be received uh, and treated uh, as a capital asset, even though when they receive the Bitcoin, that receipt is deemed uh, income. For retirement accounts, a little bit different, right? When IRAs and 401ks, they're tax exempt. When they buy or sell capital assets like real estate, stock, there's no tax on the gains, right? For example, you bought Tesla stock at $100, you sold it at $200, there is no gain tax on that gain when you own it in a retirement account. That's called tax deferral. And that is the foundation of the retirement system. That's why one of the main reasons why people want to use their retirement funds to make alternative asset investments or even just regular old equity investments because there are no gains or no tax, I should say, on the gains. Same token, there's no recognize losses or deductions for the losses when you lose money in the account. Your account just drops in value, but you don't get a deduction for the loss. So the only way, the only instance in a retirement account that a gain could be subject to tax is the regime of the unrelated business taxable income or UBTI. Under UBIT or UBTI, a retirement account can trigger a tax, which can go all the way up to 37%. That's the maximum UBIT tax, which generally is triggered at a very low threshold, around 20 or so thousand bucks. If a retirement account does one of the three activities, uses margin for trading, whether it's stocks or cryptos, uses a non-recourse loan, a loan that's not personally guaranteed to buy real estate. Remember, you can't personally guarantee an obligation in your retirement account, so that's why the loan must be non-recourse. There is an exemption for 401ks under 514c9, where a 401k can use non-recourse leverage to acquire real estate and not be subject to this 37% maximum UBTI tax. However, IRAs do not um, 
uh, are not able to satisfy that definition and uh, that exemption. It only applies to 401ks. And then thirdly, if an IRA or 401k invests in a business through a pass-through entity like an LLC, corporations like Apple or Tesla or any C corp will block in the UBTI tax because it already pays a corporate level tax. So that brings us to mining. And that's why I went into such details whether mining can be deemed a business or not. So some tax practitioners have looked at Bitcoin mining and, and treated it or, or seemingly are trying to treat it as receiving a dividend from stock or maybe rental income from real estate, two passive categories of income that are not subject to the UBIT tax because they're passive. And you know, there's some argument there. Although when you mine Bitcoin, the amount of energy and the amount of computer programming required seems a little bit more active than just owning a stock and receiving dividend or owning a piece of property and just getting the rental income for doing nothing other than owning the underlying asset. So for example, Bitcoin mining consumes 0.5% of all electricity in the world <laughs> and seven times what Google's total usage is. And that's according to the New York Times. So there is a lot of computer programming going on. I actually think it looks more like option trading. So this is, this is my thought. So according to the IRS, any gain from the lapse or termination of options to buy or sell security is excluded from UBTI. Okay. So an option is a contract that gives the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell an underlying asset at a specific price on or before a certain date. So an option, just like a stock or bond is a security. It's also a binding contract. So, Yes, it's maybe a little bit more active than dividend because there's actually some work that goes into that option contract, um, but it's still passive. Um, so I think a better analogy of Bitcoin mining um, is option trading um, versus just uh, a dividend or a rental income. I think no matter what, the determination again, whether you're doing option trading, whether you're doing um, real estate is whether the underlying activity will rise to a trader business. I have some colleagues that say all IRA, 401k mining activity is subject to UBIT. It's all a trader business. Now, I'm not sure I agree with that because that's not what the notice 2014-21 says, right? Just like not all real estate activity done by a retirement account is passive or active, right? It's based off facts and circumstances. I have a lot of clients that engage in passive rental real estate, and I have some clients that engage in active real estate based off the underlying activity. Whether someone's developing a track of land with 75 homes, or someone owns two rental homes and are just collecting rental income, those two activities will potentially generate two different categories of income. One, one passive, not subject to UBIT, and the other one active business subject to UBIT. So, when it comes to mining Bitcoin, because it's POW, proof of work, um, there is more that goes into it than proof of stake, which looks a lot more like a dividend. You're just kind of staking your coins, just like you're just owning uh, the underlying equity and you're just getting a dividend for owning the shares. Um, proof of work, there is certainly more computer power outage being displayed, not by you, but by a computer. Um, again, I, I think it looks more like an option la trading um, where it either lapses or you can exercise it. It's a little bit more activity than um, a dividend. Some people say it looks more like rental real estate. Um, either way, I think it's going to determine whether your activity, the determining factor will be whether your activity rises to a trader business. Now, a couple scenarios. You own one or two computers with ASIC cards just kind of runs in the background, right? It's not your business. You're a teacher, you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're a consultant, a nurse, and you just have this in your IRA. Your IRA bought the equipment and it just kind of sits. Um, the question is then who pays for the electricity? It gets complicated, right? You do in your home, you're paying for the electricity, but your computers are, are running um, these, these programs and your IRA is benefiting. Um, is that an issue? Uh, same way you trade stocks on your personal computer. I don't know if the IRS is going to take it that far, uh, but you know that's probably not a trader business. Now, if you have 100 computers uh, and you're renting office space and you have people working there running those computers, 
Yeah, it's probably a business, right? The same way if you're investing in a mining uh, operation with thousands of computers and warehouses of computers, you're probably going to be generating business income. That's a little bit more clear because you can just look at the K1, if it's an LLC or partnership, and see how they're treating the income, which is probably business income because they're deducting the expenses associated with their mining operations. It's more difficult when it's just kind of you, one or two computers, what do you do? Well, you look at the notice because that's the only guidance we have on the subject as of now. And it says, if, doesn't say all mining activity is a trade or business. It says, if a taxpayer's mining a virtual currency constitutes a trade or business and the mining activity is not undertaken by the taxpayer as an employee. Okay, so you're, you're doing it on your own, not working for someone. And it's a trade or business, bang it's subject to UBIT because it's a business. Now, again, looking at the definition of a trader business doesn't offer that much uh, concrete support one way or the other. It's kind of a generic definition. Are you selling services? Are you selling widgets? Is there uh, the concept of the anticipation of income? Clearly, if you have one or two computers at home, you have a side, you know, this is clearly investment purposes. You have a job running the background you're not hiring anyone it's just you're paying for the expenses and just getting done i think it's harder for the irs to argue that's a trader business it doesn't mean they won't do it in any further um, guidance but as of now as of 1221 there does not seem to be any case law or any uh, formal irs position papers other than notice 2014-21 on whether crypto mining triggers ubit Proof of work, a little bit more difficult to argue than proof of stake, although I think it's, again, based off facts and circumstances. So in conclusion, crypto mining is volatile, right? The higher the price of Bitcoin, the more profitable it will be. It's, it costs money. You got to have money to pay for equipment and, and cost of electricity, which, <laughs> trust me, can get expenses. I've, I've done it with my friends. It's, it's funny. It's expensive. Uh, it's fun as hell, to be honest. Um, and I think if you have one or two... Uh, Computers going, um, probably okay. It's definitely, it's gonna be hard for the IRS to argue trader business. Um, and, and technically you, you can take in those Bitcoin rewards, you know, tax-free without recognizing them as income. Um, if, if it's a larger operation, then you probably have UBIT. And you probably should just do it outside of a retirement account so you can treat it as a business, deduct cost of the operations and not be subject to the UBIT tax, which is 37%. Crypto trading is super interesting in a retirement account because of deferral and the ability to compound your returns. Once you pay UBIT tax on it, it doesn't look as attractive. So it's very important that your activity does not rise through a trader business because the UBIT tax will turn a very tax-friendly investment into a very tax-unfriendly um, one and uh, you know make, make, make things uh, unpleasant for you from a tax standpoint and your retirement account. So... There you have it. I wish I could give more concrete um, guidance. Um, I don't perceive, perceive it as just dividend and rental income. So on the one hand, I think it's a little more active than that. Same token, I'm not one of those tax practitioners who just say it automatically triggers UBIT because I don't think that's what notice 2014-21 says. Um, I'm coming in the middle of space off facts and circumstances and it depends on what you're doing and what your intent is with those mining operations to determine whether the activity will rise to the level of a trader business and be subject to UBIT. So hope you uh, enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, I'm going to do a subsequent one on proof of stake, Ethereum and, and other cryptos. Um, Ethereum is moving to it. Most other uh, DeFi coins use proof of stake, it uses less energy. It's easier to do, maybe not as secure. Uh, but in those cases, I think proof of stake is easier to argue uh, the mining activity is more akin to a dividend because you're staking the coin uh, versus actually working to get it. The, the name proof of work doesn't help either, right? It, it, it's synonymous with work. <laughs> it indicates you're doing something to get this, which looks more like a service. Uh, but at the end of the day, it, this, the, 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 the substance is that, hey, your computer is doing some of the work. Uh, how much computing power is being done? What's your intent? And what are the facts and circumstances? So um, thanks for listening. Um, appreciate uh, you guys. There's lots more info on our website, IRA Financial Group. If you're interested in learning more about uh, mining and UBIT or cryptos and 
uh, tax advantages. Uh, we have a great platform with Gemini where you could buy cryptos and even earn interest on it. Um, if you have questions on mining, proof of work, proof of stake, uh, let us know. We'd love to uh, help you out. Otherwise, uh, have a great rest of your week and talk to everyone again uh, next week. Take care.